it necessarily detrimental to know your past lives? Some of mine have stayed with me in the foreground of my mind, guiding me daily. Some of my past lives, knowledge of past lives, have stayed with me in the foreground of my mind, guiding me daily. Sometimes, though they are all Sometimes, though, they are all I can think of. Thank you. Hmm. Hmm. Is it necessarily detrimental to know your past lives? Some of mine have stayed with me in the foreground of my mind, guiding me daily. Good. Sometimes, though, they are all I can think of. What is that one? That part? Thinking of the past, always thinking. Hmm? Always thinking of the past, whatever they did in the past. Always the past, past, past. Huh? Huh? Not even the present. <laughs> then what about the future? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Huh? No, it's not necessarily detrimental to know the past lives. Hmm? As you yourself say, hmm? some of them have stayed with you, guiding me. So it doesn't matter your past life or others' past lives. As long as you are guided properly, as long as you think it's beneficial to you, it doesn't matter whether your past life or somebody's, hmm? follow it. But depending on that, always somebody has to come and guide you or your past life should guide you will not be beneficial to you because you are depending on somebody. Whoever guides you shall make you independent. He should never make you dependent on them. And that goes with anybody, even the spiritual teachers. Ultimately, even God. Do not depend on God for everything. Learn the lessons. That's why God has given you a freedom. You should make use of the freedom to make yourself grow well. And again, the past life need not be a better life. Normally, we progress. You might have been in the lower level. So, if you are in the 10th grade and your past life is in the 8th grade, 9th grade, like that, that grade will not help you in the 10th grade. You should think of where you are and the future, what you should do you should be. That's how we grow. So it's not a good idea constantly thinking of past life, past life. Huh? The soul grows further, gaining more and more and more experiences. You may say that my past mistakes might help me not to do it. It's all right. Keep the lesson. Don't keep on pondering over the mistakes. Make sure you don't do it again.
the real good policy is not even to worry about the future. Think not of the past. Past is dead and gone. It's no more. Think of the golden present. Send the karudar. Knowledge share with the ninayar. Kanmun nindra the pusipar. If a person wants to be totally free, this is the quality of a jivan mukta, they say. They don't worry about the past. And they don't worry about the future again. Think of the golden present. Experience. Learn all the lessons that you can from the present. The people who are thinking of the past will fail to notice the present. And the same way who worry about the future also will forget the present now. So make hay when the sun shines. Hmm? <laughs> At present, I am here. What should I do? This is the opportunity I am given. How should I make my life better? By using this. That's the way it should be. Never to constantly worry about the past, past, past. See, sometimes that's all I can think of. Hmm? Means you are obsessed with that. Hmm? That's not a good growth. We know that it is wrong to take the life of any other being, living beings. Yet, we live with mosquitoes, cockroaches, who threaten our safety and health. Is it all right to dispatch a cockroach? Dispatch a cockroach <laughs> with a wish for a better life next time. Or is it always wrong to kill? Hmm. Hmm. What do you like to do? Prevention is better than cure. You don't have to kill them if you don't encourage them to come to your life. Cockroaches just don't appear themselves. Unless huh, you keep your kitchen huh, dirty. They also have to come and live. They have to have something to eat. So if you see cockroaches, that means you are not keeping the things clean. They are telling you that. Huh? They come to tell you, please keep your kitchen clean. Mosquitoes also are like that. Huh? Don't keep, huh? throw things out huh? and have huh? puddles here and there, huh? stagnated water. How can they thrive huh? if the place is absolutely clean? So instead of blaming them, Take the message from them and try to keep it clean. And with all that, if they come, just tell them not to come and bother us. With all that, if everything fails, all right. Wish them for a better life. <laughs> Dispose them. That's the final. Sama, dhana, bheda, tanda. The scripture recommends that. First, bribe them. 
dhanam, sama, say nice things, sing to them. <laughs> dhana, bribe them. That means throw them something somewhere and you go there, leave us here. Whether if you come and keep on doing it, I'm going to destroy it to you. Give them a warning. And all the three fails, then give them danda. So, so it's not, uh, we shouldn't become fanatics about not killing. Of course, we do kill constantly. Even the so-called uh, ahimsa murtis, uh, the personification of ahimsa, uh, they also have to kill to survive. Uh, as you know, if you drink even one drop of water, uh, ask the doctor, they'll tell you, in that one drop of water, there are millions of animals. Huh? Are you not killing them? You breathe in all the bacteria huh? that goes in, gets burnt, comes out as carbon dioxide. Hmm? So if you really don't want to kill anything, you should not eat, should not drink, you should not even breathe. That means kill yourself. <laughs> so there is a limitation for everything. We shouldn't go to the extremes. Consciously, we should not hurt. That's why it's called ahimsa, not non-killing, non-violence. Ahimsa paramo dharma. Non-violence is the supreme dharma. That means do not cause violence. So make your life possible with very little violence, if at all. There is, certainly. Even vegetarians have to destroy some of the vegetables. But unfortunately, with vegetables, you don't destroy them completely. Even the, the rest of the stems and other things you throw, they grow into. Again, spinach, you take all the leaves, and throw the stem, plant the stem, it comes up. Hmm. Potato, eat one half, cut the other half into ten pieces and plant them, you will have ten potato plants. Hmm. You can't do that with your goats and fish and <laughs> chicken. Hmm. Oh, I only want the Thai soup for the soup. I can plant the legs and head. <laughs> I let them grow into another... <laughs> Good? No. So that's what. Be honest to yourself. You are not doing it for others' sake. Nobody is forcing you to do this. You have to feel free. And if you live a life of nonviolence, you get blessed by all those lives. Kollan. Pulalai maruttani kai hoopi alla virum tolum. The person stays total vegetarian, uh, not to kill anything and not to eat meat. Kollan pulalai maruttan. He will not kill, he will not eat. That means killed by somebody. If he makes his life like that, all the animals in the world will recognize him right away. And they will have no animosity towards you. They can feel the non-violent smell in you. No, no animal could be even called a wild animal. Sometimes, in the natural stories and things like that, they say, wild animal, wild animal. Huh? I even 
don't like to call them wild animal. If at all there is a wild animal, it is we. <laughs> we are the people who do wild things. Like killer whale. See? We kill the whale and we call the whale killer whale. No, no animal purposely comes to hurt us. They all live abiding by the nature's law. 